One of the best things about humans living all over the world is that we have adapted to so many different climates and regions that very few other animals could. I mean, we live in deserts, jungles, plains, mountains, tundras, forests, savannas, and tiny islands. Can you think of another animal who has spread as far as we have across Earth? However, not all geographies are made equal. It's clearly harder to live on an iceberg or in the desert than on a plain made easy for farming. This has made some countries around the world have a much easier time than others when it comes to building a society and defending themselves against other nations. Some countries simply just have a better start than others due to their geographies alone. I'm going to tell you 10 countries that I think have an amazing geography for creating and holding on to their civilizations. The list is in no particular order and can be debated, but these are 10 short and sweet descriptions of countries with the best geography on earth. The first country is Turkey. Turkey sits at the top of the Middle East, at the east of Europe and at the west of Asia. It is quite literally the crossroads between these three regions. This has given Turkey and the past empires who ruled the Anatolian Peninsula some pretty great power over the rest of the world. So, so many empires have tried to control this peninsula just to control trade over the region. Specifically, they really cared about one point. See, the Anatolian Peninsula is the crossroads between Asia and Europe, and the Sea of Marmara connects the Black Sea and the Mediterranean Seas. What sits at those two intersections is the Bosphorus Strait and the city of Istanbul or Constantinople or Byzantium depending on who you ask. The city is probably the best strategically placed city on earth and has been the gateway between the west and the east for centuries. This has given Turkey an amazing position when it comes to global trade. In addition, Turkey is surrounded by the Armenian highlands to the east, the Pontic mountains to the north and the Taurus mountains to the south and Aegean Sea to the west, giving Turkey some great natural defenses. All of these protect the interior Anatolian plain where much of their farmland lies, whereas most of the population lives around the low-lying west, closer to Europe around the Sea of Marmara. These features turn Turkey into a defendable region which can trade with anybody in the old world with ease. In number two, we have France. You know France, rolling hills, gloomy beaches, and purple fields. It's one of the most powerful nations in Western Europe in part due to its geography. Earlier on in its history, there was this political theory about the natural borders of France, the geographical divisions that the French should expand to and maintain. These were the Atlantic Ocean, check, the Pyrenees Mountains, check, the Mediterranean Sea, check, the Alps, check, and the Rhine River, eh. The Rhine River is the only natural border the French could not expand to. It's their only weak spot militarily, all the other borders were fulfilled. What these contain though is a great country for humans. France is temperate, ranges from flat in the north to mountainous in the south, and also has a warm climate in the south. There are regions called massifs consisting of massive regions of highlands, but most people just don't live there. Most people live in the north and east regions of France by one of their many rivers. France is lucky when it comes to European rivers. It has many navigable, large rivers contained inside itself to easily develop the interior of the country and ship goods outside of the country. Some are the Seine, Loire, Rhone, and Garonne rivers, with many, many more. These factors make France a well-unified country with easy development in its interior regions. Thirdly, there is Argentina. If Argentina were to be judged by its geography alone, it would be one of the richest countries on earth. Argentina has some of the best land on earth, bordered by the Atlantic Ocean to the east and Andes Mountains to the west, it is the natural defenses. You know the gist. Its real strong point though is its rivers. If you thought France's rivers were great, just look at Argentina's, or at least its northern rivers since that's where most people and production is found in the nation. The Pilcomayo, Uruguay, Paraguay, Parana, and more rivers all converge into the Rio de la Plata, the most important river of the region. This effectively gives Argentina control over the whole watershed in this part of South America. It also gives them and their capital, Buenos Aires, control over the interior farmland, which happens to be some of the best in the world. Rivers are great since you can sail down them. There is just so much cheaper than going over land. 
the fertile soil of Argentina and navigable waterways have translated into many agricultural exports earlier on in its history. Unfortunately, political decisions made them fumble the bag and are no longer a world power. But if geography were the only factor in deciding which nations were rich or poor, Argentina would have been one of the richest nations on earth. Number 4 is Vietnam. Natural defenses, rivers, natural defenses, rivers, I feel like that's all I've been talking about so far. Vietnam has the rivers and puts natural defenses on steroids. Vietnam is full of jungles and mountains, especially to the north and west of the country. I mean, can you really invade them through this type of terrain? This has made many great powers of the world absolutely fail to take over Vietnam. The Chinese, Mongols, French, and Americans have all failed to wage war inside of the country. Why? I mean just look at it. Thick jungles and steep cliffs means that if you are unfamiliar with the terrain, you're going to need some pretty serious luck to navigate the region. In addition, Vietnam holds two of the most important deltas in Southeast Asia. The Red River Delta in the north and the Mekong River Delta in the south. This is where the bulk of the people, politics, and farms are concentrated. The political centers of Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City sits on these deltas, controlling the watershed in Southeast Asia. However, just because they're flat doesn't mean they're ripe for the taking. These deltas, especially the Mekong River Delta, are extremely wet and full of mangrove swamps. In fact, the whole country is wet, but for the people of Vietnam, that means just more farmland and water supply for the nation. Vietnam is one of the hardest places on earth to invade and with control over most of Southeast Asia's trades, the geography turns Vietnam into the regional power. Number 5 is possibly the best location on earth to build your country. That's right, you can see a bald eagle crying when talking about it, the United States of America. The USA is on easy mode compared to other countries. Its natural defenses include two absolutely giant oceans, the Rocky Mountains, multiple deserts to the south, and Canada to the north who could never attack the US. The United States has crammed every possible geography type into the lower 48 states. It's tropical in Florida, there's desert in the southwest, a Mediterranean climate in the west, rainforest in the northwest, plains in the interior, mountains in the east and west, and a temperate forested climate in the east. This temperate eastern climate is what made the modern US. There's just a crazy amount of farmland and land for everyone to use. The USA pretty much has been self-sufficient and a net exporter since its colonial days. The productivity in the US is very high, and they have one more thing too. The Mississippi River is what really made the US the modern superpower it is today. The Mississippi River Basin is one of the largest navigable waterways on this planet, nearly all located within the United States, along with rivers that feed into it like the Missouri, Ohio, Illinois, Tennessee, and Arkansas rivers, many of America's major cities sit on the Mississippi River Basin. The development this river has brought is unparalleled and undoubtedly helped the early US turn into the modern industrial powerhouse it is today. Now let's look at number 6, the country that created the USA, the United Kingdom. The first thing you notice when looking at Great Britain is, well, it's an island, mate. This island split off from Europe and has always given the UK a feeling of being different from the rest of the Europeans. And it has also always made them invest in their navy instead of their army. The UK was the naval power of Europe after defeating the Spanish and used that naval power to create a globe-spanning trade empire that for a while made them the richest and most industrialized in Europe. Sure, the actual island itself may be dreary, overcast, and rainy all the time, but it's also flat, temperate, and agriculture friendly. Scotland and Wales are full of highlands, but England is a farming and industrial beast. If the UK were connected to the rest of Europe, the cool Moorish forests might have made it a similar power to the Scandinavian countries. But since it was an island, the UK has turned into one of the most powerful countries on the planet and, well, used to be most of the planet too. Number 7. Africa isn't known for great geography. There is an absolutely massive desert in the north, the Sahara, a strip of overgrown jungle, and then another strip of huge desert. This leaves few places on the continent with good geography. The most northern and southern points on the continent are Mediterranean in climate, and eastern Africa is drier than the rest of the jungle, leaving room for human activity. But why not just get out of the desert or jungle, like physically rise up to leave it? 
That's what Ethiopia does. The Ethiopian highlands gives the nation a sanctuary of green in a region full of desert. It gives the nation water and plant life to build a country out of. If you look at its population density map, it correlates almost perfectly to its elevation map. And since the region gets so much rain compared to the rest of northeastern Africa and is so high up, it's where many of the region's rivers spawn. The Shabel, Awash, Zewe, and most importantly, Blue Nile rivers all spawn inside of Ethiopia. This gives the country some pretty serious control over the rest of the region, especially since they are mainly desert countries who rely on these rivers as their sole freshwater sources. The Ethiopian climate escapes the desert and turns the savanna into a temperate climate zone as you go upward, making it easier for humans to survive in the highlands. It's for these reasons why Ethiopia may become a great power inside of Africa in the not too distant future. Number 8. Like America, there is another country whose borders contain almost all geographical climates. It's another massive country on the other side of the world, China. China is mountainous in the south, flat in the north, and extremely jagged in the west. In fact, on its west is the Tibetan Plateau, the highest region on earth where only around 3 million people live. Directly to the north of that is the Gobi Desert and Karakora Mountains, which makes the only real habitable part of China on its east side. The North China Plain, Lower Yangtze Plain, and Sichuan Basin are some of the most densely populated areas of China, and I guess Earth for that matter too. Surprise, it's also where much of China's productivity comes from through industrial work. The east is also where almost all of the farmland to keep the massive population fed is, and to maintain the farms, China needed rivers. Luckily, there are three crucial river basins sitting inside of China's borders. The Yellow River to the north keeps the North China Plain unified, and although its political center, Beijing, does not actually sit on the Yellow River, it is still in the North China Plain. Going south, there is the Yangtze River. This is the largest river basin inside of China with many rivers branching out into the Yangtze. This makes up China's heartland with many of its cities like Chongqing, Wuhan, and sitting at the end of it, Shanghai. Then to the more tropical south below the southern hills, there's the Pearl River, with Guangzhou and Hong Kong sitting at the end of it. These rivers were a major reason why civilization first sprung up in China and how China could have easily unified itself so early. Control the three rivers and you control the absolutely massive nation of China. The ninth nation on this list is one also ancient like China. It's none other than Iran. Although Iran consists mainly of arid desert, it has a very rugged exterior to protect the nation. Since, well, deserts are not the best places to live in, the mountains also serve as the home to most Iranians, with much of the interior literally uninhabited. Now, the climate where most people live is more Mediterranean, wet, and temperate. The natural defenses, like Vietnam though, are amazing. To the west are the Armenian highlands and Zagros mountains, to the north the Albers mountains and a mix of highlands and deserts to the east. The Caspian Sea and Persian Gulf to the north and south both wetten the nation while protecting it too. But Iran's real beauty is shared with Turkey. Iran is in the middle of the Middle East, Asia and the Caucasus with the potential to become a trading power and expand its influence outwards as they have done in the past. This means the Iranians have been able to attack outwards but very few nations have been able to attack the Iranians inwards. This makes Iran one of the most defendable nations bound to become a trading regional power just due to geography. And our last nation is in a fitting spot. Everyone forgets about this one or puts them last on their list like I'm doing right now. It is New Zealand. New Zealand is in the middle of nowhere. Look at this, they're even far away from Australia. This makes them less integrated into the world economy than they'd like to be, but also extremely stable as a nation. The only real power that can influence them is themselves. New Zealand consists of two main islands, creatively named North and South Islands. South Island is larger and more mountainous, whereas North Island is flatter and contains more of the population. New Zealand is temperate, small, unified, and great for farming and building a country. It's like if the UK was slightly warmer and slapped into the middle of the Pacific Ocean. New Zealand was once a center of Polynesian culture, hosting the Maori people, and is still one of the most important players in the Pacific Ocean today, controlling territories far away from the main islands. New Zealand hiding in the corner of the globe makes it far away from the world's riches, but also far away from the world's problems.